Okay, welcome. Um, this is Nebraska Overdrive Library's basic training. I've scheduled about an hour and a half this morning to provide you with some um, introductory information on the Nebraska Overdrive Library's uh, program uh, service and also to do some demonstration on how you can use it to uh, check out and download audiobooks and ebooks. Um, I've got some uh, slides that I'd like to uh, run through uh, just because uh, I know some of you are uh, new uh, directors or new staff members at various libraries. So um, I always like to give background information because I think that it's helpful for you to have that information if you didn't uh, live with this program through the last um, you know, eight or nine years that we've been doing it. Um, it's helpful when you're talking to patrons and they have questions about why something works. If you have some of the background information, sometimes you can you can um, use that to answer their questions. So, the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries group is a group of Nebraska libraries that joined together with support from the Nebraska Library Commission to share the costs of offering Overdrive downloadable audiobooks and ebooks to patrons. Um, this group of libraries or the initial participants uh, started talking about how we could do this in December of 2006 uh, and it wasn't until March 2008 that we actually went live with the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries website. At that time we had 25 member libraries and we actually uh, only had in our collection 496 downloadable audiobooks. So when we first started the group, our primary interest was downloadable audiobooks. Um, at the time, ebooks and ebook readers were not uh, as ubiquitous as they are today. So um, as you can imagine, uh, with only 496 audiobooks, it took about two or three days and everything that we owned was checked out. So those were some stressful uh, first few months. Uh, we purchased only audiobooks for the first couple years. Uh, it wasn't until July 2010 that the group decided to begin buying ebooks and offering those as well. So today, we actually have 173 member libraries, and uh, these libraries serve a combined population of over 687,000 uh, Nebraskans. We own, uh, collectively, over 10,000 audiobook titles and 22,000 ebook titles. And one question I'm always asked is if Lincoln City Libraries and Omaha Public Library participate in the group. Uh, the answer is that no, they do not. Um, those were the two uh, libraries in the state that had big enough budgets at the time. Um, libraries were starting to uh, look at options for offering audiobooks and ebooks that they were actually able to go it alone. Uh, so they were able to contract with Overdrive uh, themselves for a standalone collection for just their patrons. So Lincoln City Libraries has its own. Overdrive collection. Omaha Public Library has its own Overdrive collection. And then we've got the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries collection, which is a group collection, consortium collection. Uh, it's helpful to understand how this group is funded. And um, when you can see the initial cost of getting set up uh, with the Nebraska Overdrive Libraries website, um, you can see why uh, no one other than Lincoln City Libraries or, or Omaha Public Library uh, was able to go it alone in terms of uh, contracting with Overdrive. This is why we had to uh, form a group. The initial cost just to set up the website was $28,000 and the Nebraska Library Commission paid that. There's also an annual maintenance fee uh, for participating. Um, initially that was $12,000 per year and that's what we paid annually from 2008 to 2015 and again the Nebraska Library Commission covers that annual maintenance fee. Um, starting in 2016 this fee uh, uh, began increasing $2,000 a year annually and that's what's projected to uh, be the case for the next five years so we paid 14000 in 2016, 16000 in 2017, etc. So, so far those fees only uh, cover uh, 
the website functionality. As far as actual content, um, that's an additional expense. And so our collection development budgets have always been made up primarily of the annual participation fees contributed by member libraries. Um, this current participation year, which started October 1st, 2017 and runs through at the end of September 2018, uh, we've got uh, annual participation fees contributed by member libraries of $121,204. Uh, for the last couple of years, the Nebraska Legislature has also uh, provided Nebraska eReads appropriations. Uh, that's funds that they make available uh, through the Nebraska Library Commission to provide uh, digital ebooks and audiobooks to Nebraskans. So we have uh, split those funds between the Nebraska Library Commission, Lincoln City Libraries, and Omaha Public Library. Uh, proportioned out based on population served. And so our consortium's portion of that this current year is $94,386. We've also had some libraries uh, donate extra. So uh, we have a total collection development budget this current year of $221,000 plus dollars. Uh, one thing that I will often say to uh, new participants um, especially if they're very small and they're contributing that uh, um, minimal $500 is, you know, if you have people in your community who are skeptical about that $500, one nice thing to say is that you pay in $500, but you get uh, $221,000 worth of purchasing power. And that's just for this current year's collection. Uh, as far as how we have uh, broken down uh, the collection development budget, we have, uh, for the last couple of years, we've split it 50-50 between audiobooks and ebooks. Um, within each of those categories, we then have broken it down. We spend about 57% on adult fiction, about 20% on nonfiction, and 23% on juvenile and YA titles. Uh, the average cost, varies uh, between audiobooks and ebooks. Audiobooks are more expensive and so we do wind up with fewer audiobooks. Audiobooks average uh, about $56 per volume and ebooks uh, about $25 per volume. Um, obviously there's a huge range uh, within each of those categories. You know, from, uh, you know, for ebooks can be like $7.99 all the way up to uh, you know, $75, $80. Uh, audiobooks can sometimes be over $100 uh, per copy. So again, that's the average cost. Um, I do want to say a few words about uh, content licensing models uh, that uh, titles are made available under because that does sometimes uh, influence uh, how many copies we purchase, uh, whether we repurchase titles uh, that expire, etc. Um, many titles are made available on what's called a one copy, one user license, and that's pretty much like a print edition. Uh, if we buy one copy of a title, it can only be checked out by one person at a time. Once we buy it, we own it. Uh, it doesn't expire. And I would say that um, about 70% of our ebooks are available under this licensing model, and almost all of our audiobooks are available under this model. Um, publishers also introduce metered access models, which uh, become a little harder to manage in terms of making decisions about budget. Uh, metered access applies primarily to ebooks, uh, they still work. Uh, like print books in that if you have one copy of a title, only one person can have it checked out. If you want more than one person to be able to check a title out at one time, you have to buy more than one copy. Uh, the difference is that with the metered access ebooks, they expire after either a certain number of months or a certain number of checkouts or some combination thereof. Uh, just to give you a few examples, HarperCollins ebooks, uh, expire after 26 checkouts. Uh, Simon & Schuster ebooks 
expire after 12 months, Scholastic after 24 months, and Macmillan expire either uh, after 52 checkouts or 24 months, whichever comes first. So as you can see, um, looking at the licensing model, price, uh, how much, how often something circulated, those are all factors that um, play into decisions about how many copies of a title we want to purchase, um, whether we want to repurchase it after it's expired. Um, who does collection development for the group? Um, we have two volunteer selectors, uh, Mary Jo Mack, who works at the John Stahl Library in West Point, purchases adult, adult fiction titles. Uh, Karen Drevo from Norfolk Public Library uh, purchases adult nonfiction and juvenile YA titles. And I've got their contact information there because uh, you can always send them uh, requests for titles that you or your patrons are interested in if you're not seeing them in the current collection. Plus, um, my uh, supervisor, Deborah Dragos, here at the Library Commission also does a lot of uh, purchasing. Uh, she's the one that tends to go in regularly and look at hold uh, waiting lists, uh, hold ratios, and makes decisions about whether to purchase additional copies of popular titles. She tries to fill in a series and make sure that if we've got several of the books in a series that we fill in any gaps or continue to purchase titles in that series as they're available. Uh, she uh, considers requests. She considers whether to repurchase titles uh, once the, uh, they expire after a certain amount of time or a certain amount of checkout. And if she doesn't uh, repurchase them, then she weeds them out of the collection. So um, again, uh, those are people that you can send uh, suggestions to. Uh, they're always welcome. And you can also, anytime you're interested, log into uh, the marketplace administrative module and you can certainly search the collection to see what is available to purchase if you're trying to decide whether if a title is not available you can uh, go ahead and um, and uh, search and see if a title is available and if it is you can always make a request um, I have uh, one person who's come. Okay, somebody was having problems with sound, but they said now it's back. Um, moving on, um, our group has voted on certain circulation policies. Um, we have someone who's reporting the sound is dropping in and out. I don't know if that's just one person or if other people are experiencing it as well. Um, if uh, other people are experiencing it. Can you let me know through the questions? Thanks. Um, patrons can check out six titles at a time. Uh, we have a hold limit of three titles. So uh, a patron can have three titles on hold at a particular time. Um, and one reason we did that is because we do try to make repurchasing decisions or decisions about purchasing additional copies based on how many holes an item has on it. So, you know, we want people to be a little bit judicious about which titles they put on hold. Also, we've uh, established uh, lending periods that are available for the different uh, formats. Um, audiobooks can be checked out for either 7 or 14 days. Ebooks can be checked out for 7, 14, or 21 days. We have a set default, a default checkout period of 14 days uh, for audiobooks and ebooks for the uh, Nebraska Overdrive Library site as a whole. That means if a patron logs in, doesn't do anything to change their own checkout period, just checks out an item, it's going to be checked out for 14 days. They have the option on a title by title basis to select one of the other uh, lending periods that we make available, or they can set their own account level defaults. If, for example, uh, you know you always want ebooks checked out for 21 days, um, you can change your own account default to 21 days. So I'll show you how to do that. Finally, a few words about file formats. Um, for ebooks, um, not every book is available in every 
format. Um, many books are available in multiple formats, so it's I would say it's typical for ebooks to be available in uh, EPUB, Overdrive Read, and Kindle. So you often have three uh, choices uh, to choose between when you check out a book. Um, but again, it's not uh, not every title is available in all formats, so you do have to keep an eye on that if you have format requirements. Uh, EPUB titles can be downloaded and read on smartphones or tablets using the Overdrive app. They can be also be downloaded and read on a computer using Adobe Digital Edition software, and then from there they can be transferred to the sort of standalone e-readers, um, which used to be uh, more popular than they are now. Overdrive read format uh, wasn't available when we initially offered ebooks, but it's something that Overdrive has developed. This format uh, can be read via a current web browser, and so there's no software, no downloads required. Um, one nice thing is that you can uh, download uh, to the to the browser cache um, one of these Overdrive read books, so you can actually save that so that you can uh, read it when you're offline. Uh, I think Overdrive is the only, uh, or for it certainly for a long time, it was Over, Overdrive was the only uh, vendor that was able to offer their ebooks in Kindle format. So um, if you do have patrons who are big Kindle users who have a Kindle device, uh, they will be able to get most uh, ebooks in that format. Finally, uh, You'll find some titles available in PDF, though it's probably the most uh, limiting format, not as flexible as others. That has to be downloaded and read on a computer with Adobe Digital Editions. Um, as far as audiobooks go, um, audiobooks are now available in one of two formats. Um, and usually they're available in both these formats. So MP3 files, which can be downloaded and listened to on a smartphone or tablet using the Overdrive app. Uh, the MP3 files can also be downloaded to a Windows or Mac computer using what they kind of call a legacy software, uh, Overdrive for Windows or Overdrive for Mac. Uh, the nice thing about downloading it to a computer using this uh, legacy software is that that legacy software allows you to transfer it to a portable mp3 player uh, or burn it to a CD. Overdrive Listen is like Overdrive Read. It lets you listen to the audiobook via a current web browser on your computer or mobile device. Again, no special software or no downloads required. Uh, the one limitation is that uh, Overdrive Listen doesn't work if you're offline it, because it's a streaming uh, service that can't be downloaded or saved in your browser. Um, in most cases, titles can be returned early. Um, there's a couple reasons to do this. One is it frees the title up for another patron. Also, if you are a patron who often has uh, maxed out at six checkouts, it frees up one of your checkouts so you can check out another book. Um, if you don't return a title early, the titles return themselves automatically on their due dates and it's down to the minute. So based on what time of day you check the title out initially, that's the time of day it's going to expire. So it's not like uh, when you check out a physical book from the library and you have probably until midnight to drop it in the drop box. Um, it may disappear on you um, in the middle of the day. Um, there's now a renewal option um, that uh, is uh, available now that we've moved to the new Overdrive website. Uh, and I have mixed feelings about it. Um, basically, what it does is it lets you place a hold on the title three days before it's due. Um, if nobody else has a hold on it, then the title uh, uh, is rechecked out to you um, after it after your current checkout period's over. Um, if other people have holds on it, then you're basically placed on the hold list. Okay, um, 
I want to move on now to the actual demo. Um, before I do that, do you guys have questions about uh, the uh, anything on the uh, PowerPoint, any of that sort of background information? Please let me know. Okay, um, moving on to the demo. Um, I'd like to start out just by uh, doing a couple things. I've never done a poll before, but I tried to make one up here. I thought it would at least kind of get us in the right state of mind. So I think I'm sharing a poll with you that asks what kind of device uh, or devices you use or plan to use if you're um, using OverDrive. So if you see that poll, if you can um, click on uh, the options that uh, apply to you. Um, when you're helping uh, patrons with OverDrive, especially new users, there are several uh, questions that you might want to get answered or that you want to think about when you're advising them about the best way to proceed. Um, for example, it's helpful sometimes to know if the patron is interested in ebooks or audiobooks or both. Uh, it's interesting. It's sometimes important to know um, if they are interested in ebooks. Uh, do they uh, require the Kindle format based on their uh, device? Again, what's the primary device they plan to read or listen on? What operating system is it running? Do they have more than one device that they want to be able to download their content to at the same time? Are they always going to have uh, wireless internet access or do they need to be able to download the content for offline access? So those are some of the kinds of uh, questions or uh, factors that determine how you advise them to proceed. So um, I um, it looks like on the poll, um, it looks like we have 80% uh, say they use a tablet of some sort, 40% say they use a smartphone, and 20% say they use a Kindle e-reader or Kindle Fire tablet. Uh, nobody says they use a standalone e-reader, and nobody said they use an MP3 player. And that kind of jives with my sense of how it is nowadays. When we first started back in 2008, uh, it was almost exclusively e-readers and mp3 players. So um, things have changed over time, but of course uh, there are some people out there who still use mp3 reader, re mp3 players and e-readers. So what you as a library staff member sometimes run into is you get really used to and comfortable helping people with things like smartphones and tablets and Kindles, and then all of a sudden um, after uh, months and months of not seeing one, someone shows up with an old e-reader or an older MP3 player and they're asking you how to use OverDrive on that old device. And so, um, unfortunately, we still have to know those old methods as well. And so I'll try to, my, my goal is to cover that towards the end of this session. Okay. Let me see if I can get back to my computer screen. Okay, um, so we are going to start out by accessing the Nebraska Overdrive Library's digital collection on my Windows 10 desktop computer by typing, uh, or I've already typed it in, the URL um, in the address bar, so nebraska.overdrive.com, um, and I'm just using the Firefox, up, up, an up-to-date version of the Firefox browser. Um, when a patron first goes to the site, they'll be prompted to sign in, so they'll need to choose their library from the drop-down menu, type in their library card number and their PIN if uh, your library is uh, using PINs. Um, they should be able to ask uh, the system to save their pass 
password. I tend not to do that on my computer just because I end up logging in and out with multiple people's passwords from multiple libraries. And so um, I don't want to accidentally stay logged into uh, someone else's account. Um, so when they log in, they uh, are on the Nebraska Overdrive Library's homepage. There are uh, several menu options at the top, which we'll review, uh, including uh, help in the upper right-hand corner. But what you see front and center are you see, uh, if you scroll through the page, you see seven collections that OverDrive has uh, highlighted here. So the first collection at the top of the page is the latest 300 titles added to the website. Uh, if you scroll down, you see a selection of books that appear on the Nebraska 150 book list that was compiled uh, by the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association in celebration of the sesquicentennial. Uh, you'll also see uh, read-alikes, uh, Into the Water read-alikes, we've got Game of Thrones read-alikes, etc. So there are some sort of uh, pre-formatted collections that your patrons can browse. Um, now what happens, what tends to happen, is that because the latest 300 added is at the top, it's what people see when they log in. Uh, they can see uh, six titles up front, and then they can click on the See All link and they can pull up a result list that contains all 300 of those titles. Because human nature is what it is, um, people tend to hit this collection really hard. It, it, we all want to see what's new, and new titles are usually uh, the titles that patrons are initially after. So what happens is that it's not unusual for almost all, or sometimes even all 300 of these titles to get checked out in uh, a short period of time. Uh, last night, when I was looking at this collection, only three titles out of 300 were available. All the rest had already been checked out. Uh, it looks like an additional order was placed since then, and so now uh, the first screen of 24 results are all available to check out. When you get to the second screen, then you start hitting uh, waiting lists, titles that are already checked out. And so, um, you know, uh, over 260 some titles of this 300 uh, result list are checked out. So that can be frustrating for patrons. And so one of the things I'm going to try to do in this demo is show you some of the other ways that you can uh, search for titles uh, to avoid that frustration for your patrons. So I'm going to go ahead and go back um, and I'm just going to quickly go through some of these menu options before we start searching. Uh, the subjects menu just uh, displays subject headings that are assigned to uh, books in our particular collection. You can browse subject headings uh, for all formats, ebooks or audiobooks, and they've got uh, the display broken down into categories. For example, this is adult fiction. If you click on African American fiction under this category, you'll see there are 106 titles that have that subject heading. So that's uh, one way you can browse for content. Uh, the collections menu up here lists some additional collections above and beyond those uh, seven that are displayed on the home page, um, with one exception. Uh, these collections are format specific, so they either contain all ebooks or all audiobooks. Uh, the exception is this kids and teens collection listed under the special heading. You'll see it listed on the collections menu. It's also its own link over here under the logo. Um, this collection is special because it actually uh, is housed on its own website. Um, basically, this is just a subset of the uh, complete Nebraska Overdrive Libraries collection. It's all the juvenile and YA titles, none of the titles categorized as adult. 
So uh, what some uh, libraries do is they like to have a separate link on their website and link uh, to the Kids and Teens collection as well as the overall collection. Um, different color scheme, uh, and they have some collections that are uh, specific to kids and teens. So we've got a Golden Sower Reading Classics program collection, and then some read alike collections uh, that are uh, based on uh, current popular titles. Summer reading, I think that's last year's summer reading theme, so we'll probably be compiling a collection of titles that would correspond to this upcoming summer reading program theme as well. So uh, that's the Kids and Teens collection. There's a link here for Kindle Books. Basically what happens when you click on this link is it just shows you a result list of all the ebooks that are available in Kindle format. So um, we own about 20,000, 23,000 ebook titles and 20,900 plus of those are available in Kindle format. Um, to me, this is still is too big of a list to really be useful, but it does let you see how many of the books are available in Kindle format. Um, finally, I just want to point out help in the upper right hand corner and we're going to come back to help uh, later. Um, the overdrive help I think is actually really helpful. Um, in particular, when you're working with a patron uh, and once you find out what device they use, if you come to help and click on devices, you can get step-by-step -step instructions that walk you through um, what they need in order to get content on their particular device. So this is um, really helpful, especially if someone brings in a device that you don't work with very often. So for example, uh, an MP3 player or um, one of the older iPods or a Chromebook or something. So uh, we'll come and look at the help uh, a little bit more later, but the devices category is really helpful and also I've had a lot of good luck just typing in terms that relate to the question I'm trying to answer. Okay, as far as searching goes, we've got the search uh, icon that opens up a search box. Um, usually when uh, Usually when I'm looking for a title, um, I lots of times I'll do sort of a combo author title search. This basic search is a keyword search. It searches for words in the title, words in the author field, words in the description, uh, etc. So if I have a very specific book I want, I sometimes type in the author's last name and the, a keyword from the title and that brings up my book. Uh, you can also just type in an author's name, and so that's what I'm going to do for my first search here. I'm going to type in James Patterson. Whoops. And do that search. And I have uh, 320 titles that match that search, and they're displayed 24 titles per page. By default, uh, I see a grid display that just shows the book cover and a little bit of information about the uh, uh, title. I also have the option of toggling to a list display that provides a little bit more information about each uh, title, including the first couple lines of the description. So that's something you can toggle back and forth between. Um, here, uh, important information that you can uh, glean at a glance uh, would be the banner at the top, which they uh, call an availability banner, and they have an action link down at the bottom, and the action link and the availability banner uh, always kind of go together. So for instance, the first three books are not available uh, at the moment, somebody already has them checked out. So my only option is to put myself on the wait list. So it says wait list on the banner at the top and my action link gives me the option of placing a hold. Uh, the fourth title is available, so that means that I can go ahead and borrow it. And you'll notice the little uh, 
ribbon uh, over on the right here is checked. That means I've actually added this title at some point in the past to a wish list. So any of these titles, you can add them to a wish list if you want to come back um, and uh, remember them uh, as something you might want to check out in the future. This fifth title, it says on hold. So I've actually, I'm logged into my account, so I've already placed this title on hold. And I can go to the page uh, within my account that shows my holds if I click on the action link. Uh, the eighth uh, book listed, it says borrowed. So I already have this title borrowed. And I can view it if I click on go to loans. So. Um, the other thing that you can uh, see at a glance is format. We didn't limit our search by format, so um, you'll notice most of these uh, have the ebook icon along with the word ebook. I don't think there are any audiobooks on this first page, but you'll see a little headphone icon and it'll say audiobook if uh, something's available in audio format. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and place a hold. Um, I can do that. Right now, if I want, I click on place a hold. And I get a message that says, uh, my hold position is 18 of 18 holes. Um, that sounds bad, but it's also important to notice that our library owns three copies of this. So it's actually more like um, I'm sixth in line for a particular copy. Uh, I also have a link that says, I can go to manage my holds and if I click on that I will go to my holds page. Uh, here's the book I just put a hold on. You'll see I have another hold that I placed in the past. Um, it tells me what date the hold was placed. I can edit the email that the uh, announcement will be sent to when this book is checked out to me. So um, if I don't want it sent to my work email, I can change that email if I want. Um, if, the, if I've been waiting in line for a long time for this book and it looks like I'm about to get it and I have a lot of things going on in my life and I don't want to um, have it uh, suddenly be available for me and I don't have time to read it, I can actually suspend my hold uh, for a certain number of days. Um, you'll still move up in the hold list, uh, but it won't actually get checked out to you. So uh, you, won't, uh, you won't lose it if you're on vacation or busy with other titles. Finally, I can remove the hold if I no longer want to be on hold for a particular title. Going back to my result list, um, let's go ahead and look for an available title to check out. And since I already have a uh, first to die checked out, let's see if we can find a second chance. Now I could borrow this right now without looking at any more information about it. And if I just click on borrow, it's going to uh, check it out for me for the default checkout period for eBooks which um, if I haven't gone into my account settings and changed it, is 14 days. Sometimes you're going to want more information about a book before you decide whether you check it out. So I've clicked on the title. Here you'll see that this book is part of a series. And so you can actually click on the series title in order to uh, pull up a list of other books in the series that we own. You'll see the um, basic uh, format, ebook format. If you look over to the right, you'll see the specific formats that this book is available in. So it's available in Kindle format, OverDrive read format, EPUB format. It is not available in PDF format. So this is, this is fairly typical. The majority of our books are available in these three formats. Um, you'll see a star rating, uh, little, uh, measurement there. Um, so you can see that on average uh, patrons have given this four stars. If you want to rate it yourself, uh, you can just click on the number of stars that you want to give it. Um, it's also useful to look at the number of copies. So you can see uh, two out of the five copies we own are available to check out. So three people currently have it checked out, two copies are available. Um, 
down here we have a description so we can read a little bit about uh, the book. The details uh, information gives you the publisher and it gives you ISBNs for the different editions. Um, if this were an audiobook, this detail screen would also tell you the um, runtime, how many hours the audiobook is, so that's sometimes useful information, and the details is the only place where you can find that information. Finally, you may also um, have an option to view some professional reviews. In this case, we've got one from Publishers Weekly, Library Journal. Um, and beyond the description and reviews, you can also read a sample of the book. So um, if you click on that, it uh, pulls up uh, the text of the book. And I think in this case, you can actually, um, I think you have 11 chapters worth that you can actually read um, just as a sample. So you can get, get a pretty good idea if this is a book you want to check out. Um, if this were an audiobook, uh, we would often have a chance to listen to a sample. So you can actually get a sample of audio as well. Um, as far as borrowing it then, you'll see on this screen, in addition to saying borrow, it says for 14 days. So that's the default for this account. Have a couple options. Um, my option right here is that this is where I can change my borrowing uh, period on a title by title basis. So I could say, okay, I only want this for seven days. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, check it out for seven days. And now it's checked out. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, we've done one search so far, we've placed a hold and checked out a title. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do another search. And uh, so I'm going to go up here, click on search, and this time I am going to do a really broad uh, subject search. So I'm going to type in the word dogs. What I'm actually looking for are, you know, I want one of, I'm looking for an audio book and I want uh, like a nonfiction uh, audio book, the kind of book about someone and their dog, the heartwarming story of how much the dog means to them. So I'm looking for that kind of book. You'll see my general search for dogs retrieves 839 titles. Um, if you scroll through the list, you'll see some of the titles are for kids, some of the titles for adults, uh, some of them are ebooks, some are audiobooks, uh, some titles are fiction, and they obviously don't have anything to do with dogs. It's just that the word dogs appears in the title. So I've done a really broad search, and um, I've got a lot of titles in my result list that don't match what I'm looking for. So. I can go ahead and start filtering my results. And this is this is actually why I don't use their preset collections very often, because you can do a search and then you can really uh, whittle it down to what you want. So I'm going to start applying some filters right here. So the first filter I'm going to apply is, I don't want to see titles that I can't check out right now. So I'm going to say, show me titles that are available now. I also. Um, don't want kids titles, so I'm going to go back. You'll see my available now titles filter has been applied, so I'm going to go ahead under uh, audience and I'm going to say only show me adult titles. So now I'm down to five, 403 results, so I've cut my results down by half already. I also said that I wanted an audiobook, so I'm going to come down to audiobooks. And in this case, uh, it's saying I've got uh, 35 titles are available in the listen format, 35 in the MP3. So I'm guessing it's the same set of 35 titles. So I'm going to just go ahead and say MP3 audiobook format down to 35. I also wanted uh, nonfiction. I don't want this, uh, uh, for example, this uh, Henning Mankel Dogs of Riga type. Uh, fiction book. So I'm going to go ahead and say under subject, I want nonfiction. 
So now I'm down to 20 titles. All are available. All you can see are audiobook. Um, and they are looking more like what I had in mind. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just borrow the title from here. Okay, so I now have that audiobook checked out. I'm going to go ahead and do one more search before we start uh, talking more about downloading this content. Um, because I want you to be aware that there's an advanced search option. To get to the advanced search, you click on search, and then you'll see down here under the search box you've got the advanced link. Um, on the advanced search page, you can type in uh, title words and author names, but you can also just select the criteria from these drop-down menus. So again, um, this is one of the reasons why I don't use their pre-formatted collections as much, because I can kind of format my own collection uh, this way. So I like the idea of their latest 300 titles added, their you know front and center collection on the home page, but Again, sometimes that content all gets checked out, so I can choose my own date added uh, criteria. So I could say something like, okay, I want to see titles that were added in the last six months. I am looking for, in this case, let's say Kindle eBooks. Again, this is why I don't find this Kindle uh, ebook limiter up here all that useful because I can always do my own limit to Kindle ebooks if that's what I need, but I can do it in conjunction with other criteria as well. Uh, let's say I want titles that are available now, and I'm looking for a YA titles, so I can come down here and say YA. Now, I always do this wrong. I always come up here and I click on search, and that is not actually the search button. I want the search button. I want it down here. So I'm going to click on my search. And you'll see in this case, I've got 70 results. They're all YA books available in Kindle format, and it looks like one uh, book just uh, snuck in that was, uh, I'm guessing it was just checked out very recently. When I uh, did the search earlier, none of them were checked out. So once in a while, uh, uh, information doesn't quite get caught up. Okay. The next place I want to go to is the My Account area of your uh, account. So I'm going to open this My Account area and you'll see I have several pages I can go to. Loans, holds, wish list, rated title, history, and settings. I'm going to go ahead to the go to the loans page and notice as soon as I'm on one of these account settings pages um, all my menu options show up along the top as well so I don't always have to use the drop down menu. So uh, this shows I have five titles checked out. I can borrow one more. Um, in each instance, it tells me how many days I have left in my checkout period. Um, expires in 14 days, expires in seven days. Um, you can see what uh, options you have in terms of reading, downloading, and listening. So uh, the audiobook we just checked out is available to download in MP3 format. I can also listen to it in my browser. Uh, the Second Chance uh, title is available uh, in Kindle format. I can read it in my browser or download it uh, in EPUB format. Um, you'll notice under each title I have a return option. Uh, that return option will actually go away if I either download uh, the uh, MP3 or EPUB format or if I send the uh, uh, choose the read now with Kindle format. Um, once I uh, choose one of those download options uh, from that point on I'm going to have to actually return the book through the software I've used to download the uh, content. So um, right now I can return all of them from the screen if I want and after we uh, do some downloading we'll come back and see how that uh, option goes away. 
Um, let's move on. Uh, we already looked at uh, the holes option, so you can always go back to your holes and view them there. Uh, wish list is just uh, nice. Um, for instance, you can only have three books on hold at a time. So if there's another book that you know you want to read, but it's got a lot of holes on it and you don't want to use up one of your holes waiting for it, add it to your wish list and then at some point down the road, um, after time has passed, after it's not so popular, um, and you're looking for something to read, you can come to your wish, wish list. and. It's nice because you can see all titles on your wish list and you can also toggle over to see just titles that are available to check out right away. So that's kind of a nice way to keep a running list of titles um, for future uh, checkout. If you've rated titles, you can see titles you've rated. Um, history is a fairly new feature. Um, for years, patrons have asked for a functionality that would keep track of titles they checked out. Um, obviously, for librarians, we always get nervous about that because of privacy options. So, this is actually a setting that can be turned off, uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But for those patrons who want uh, sort of an automated list of everything they check out, uh, this history list will do that for them unless they choose to uh, deactivate it. So, um, titles can't titles, once you check them out, they're automatically added to the history list. Um, if you go through and you are, let's just go back to the home screen and go to uh, one of these pages, you can also manually add a title to history. So maybe you already read it in print format or from another service, but you still want to keep uh, track of the fact that you read it. You can always manually add something to your list without checking it out. Finally, the last uh, account screen I want to look at is your settings screen. And this is where you can set your personal uh, lending period defaults if you want to have them be different than the 14 days that we've set uh, for our service as a whole. So if I know I always want to check out ebooks for 21 days, I can switch uh, there to 21 days and probably leave my audiobooks at 14. I'll still have the option of changing them on a title by title uh, basis as I check titles out, but I can, um, again, like I said, I can set defaults for my account. This is where your patron can turn off the autumn, um, sorry, this is where they can turn off that um, automatic uh, add to a history list if they don't want to keep track, so they can just toggle that off, um, or uh, they can leave it checked and they will automatically uh, have a record of what they've checked out. Um, by default, automatic hold checkout is uh, turned on. That means that when an item becomes available for you, it's checked out to you right away and you get an email notification. If you turn this off, um, when the title becomes available, it's kind of held in limbo. You're sent an email, and then you will have three days to go in and actually check the title out. So, um, those are uh, that. Those are your two options for hold uh, checkouts. You can also set a filter on your account in general. Um, right now, uh, by default, you're viewing titles for all audience levels. You can go in and you can specify uh, one or more than one. Uh, so maybe you want to say, I just want to see juvenile and young adult titles, which of course then is like the kids and teens collection. Um, you'll see we've got general adult and mature adult. Um, mature adult, as you probably can guess, doesn't mean old adult. It means uh, uh, mature content or uh, erotic literature. Um, a couple times we've had patrons, for some reason, they've gotten into their settings and they've uh, somehow mature adult was set as the filter and so they go and they uh, 
you know, they do their searches and all they're getting is adult, mature adult content and they can't understand what's going on. So it's always good to be aware that uh, once in a while someone gets uh, one of these audience filters turned on that they don't mean to. That can affect how many books they're getting in response to a search. This Kindle preference uh, setting is actually a little bit odd. Um, what it, it doesn't limit your searches to only items that are available in Kindle format. What it does is that if you check out an item that is available in Kindle format, it will only show you the Kindle option. It, it basically uh, takes the download EPUB uh, option away. And I think the reason they've instituted this is there are times when patrons who have a Kindle e-reader, for instance, uh, check out an item, it's available in Kindle format, but they accidentally click the download EPUB uh, button, and basically that locks in that EPUB format for them to, throughout the checkout period, and if they can't, uh, if they can't read that format, they don't have the right kind of device to read that format on, they're kind of out of luck. They have to return the title and hopefully it's available still and they can check it out and then get the Kindle format, but if it was something that there's a long hold list for, they're kind of out of luck. So I think that's why this option was instituted. There are a couple display options that you can turn on, a uh, high contrast option, and then they have a dyslexic font that is supposed to be easier for people um, who have dyslexia to read. So those are a couple other settings there. So questions about, um, any questions about uh, searching or account settings? If not, we're going to move on to uh, actual read and listen options. How do you actually uh, start using this content? Um, the first option I want to talk about is the read now in browser and listen now in browser options. So we are on a Windows 10 computer using the latest uh, version of Firefox. Um, so uh, this option actually will work on lots of different types of devices. So um, your iPad has the Safari browser. Your, um, you know, if you've got an Android device, there's a browser usually on your Android smartphone or tablet that will uh, support this reading and listening option. Um, that Kindle Fire tablet has the Silk browser that will support this option. So this option is, um, like I said, very easy. You don't have to download special software. All you do is click Read Now in Browser. So for the help, for instance, I can click Read in Browser. Um, it pulls up the book. You can page forward and backward through it. Tapping in the center of the screen pulls up menu options. You've got the uh, progress bar that you can drag. You also have some menu options up here, so I can switch between uh, one column and two columns. I can search for a word within the book. I can bookmark a page if I want to. And then here I've got um, I also have the search option. I can go through and look at how many chapters there are, jump to a different chapter. If I've placed bookmarks, this is where I can see those bookmarks and go back to them if I want. Um, reading settings lets me change the size of the font and it lets me uh, specify a different look for uh, the uh, background color and font color. It lets me choose different fonts. Finally, um, if you'll remember, I said that the Read in Browser uh, Overdrive Read format is uh, available for offline access. So this is where you would um, download it for offline access. So you click on Start Download. 
and you'll see it says it's downloading the book to your browser. Um, if you want to be able to find it in the future, um, you would want to uh, bookmark it. So, uh, you know, I can bookmark it, and then when I don't have internet access, if I want to uh, read it again, I would come and look at my bookmarks, um, find it, and go to it. So, that is how you do the OverDrive read option. Um, Overdrive Listen works in a similar way. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this because I've got a headphone on. So uh, you can listen to it, like I said, um, through your browser on your computer, on a smartphone, on a tablet. Um, you've got uh, an option to change the speed. You can make uh, the dialogue faster. You can set a uh, sleep timer. There's a bookmark option. And again, you can jump between chapters. Um, if you tap or click in the center um, of the book, you get simple controls and the option to jump forward and backward 15 seconds. Um, the one option you don't have, as I said, with the, the listen and browser is you don't have the option of saving it for offline access. So you always do have to be connected to the internet to use that. Okay. Um, now I need to get um, my camera set up here in a, a minute. Um, I want to go ahead and talk about the Kindle option. Um, so let's check out the help, the Kindle format of the help. So. Um, and I just want to point out the return option is still available here. So I'm going to go ahead and say read now with Kindle. And you'll see what it does is it actually sends me to um, my Amazon account. In this case, uh, it has already logged me in. I must have uh, saved the password on this particular computer. Um, so if your patron has a Kindle device or if they have downloaded and set up a Kindle app on something like their iPad or their Android phone, they would have had to do that through their Amazon account. So they should have an Amazon account that they can log into. Um, so now it says get library book and deliver to my default device is a paper white, but you'll notice this is a drop down menu. And so um, we have put the Kindle app on our iPad. And so I could send it to that app. Uh, we have a Kindle Fire tablet, so I could send it to there as well. So there are options here. I just want to send it to the Kindle paper white. And let me just see if I can bring up my camera here and get it. So it works. Um, what I want you to do is just watch. So the uh, Kindle Paperwhite uh, is connected to the Wi-Fi here at the Commission. So when I say get library book, and I need to bring up the camera again, it says that your digital library book will be delivered to the Kindle Paperwhite your Kindle will download the help the next time it connects to Wi-Fi. So this should be showing up here shortly. And there it is. It's already uh, been sent to my Kindle um, paper white. Now I want to go back to the loans page on the Nebraska Overdrive Library's website. And I just want to point out, I no longer have the option to return my title from this page. Um, what's nice, though, is they have 
better information now telling you how you can return the item. It says because you selected the Kindle book format for this book, uh, it can't be returned from this page. Uh, go to manage, it says uh, you have to go to your Amazon website and go to manage your content and devices within your Amazon account. And I have to log in. And so it took me to the Manage Your Content and Devices page. But if you have to walk a patron through how to find that, if they go up to the where it says, hello, their name, account, and lists, uh, they can also find that right there. So you'll see here's the help where it's borrowed. And if I want to return this title, this is where the return this book option is. So I can say return. Are you sure you want to turn this book? Yes. Okay. And you'll see the book has already uh, been uh, removed from my uh, Kindle Paperwhite. And if we go back to this screen and I refresh, it's now gone off my loans page as well. Okay, so um, we have uh, gone through a couple options for reading, but now I want to talk about um, how you would get it on uh, uh, a device like uh, tablets. So we are going to talk a little bit about the OverDrive app. Um, this is probably the way most people uh, access um, OverDrive content uh, these days. So let me get the camera set up again here. So this is the Library Commission iPad and um, again, if I want to uh, read it on the iPad, one way to do that is to download the OverDrive app. Um, the OverDrive app is available um, for iOS operating system devices. It's available for Android devices, Windows 8 and 10 devices, Kindle tablets, and Chromebook. Um, and just to... Uh, show you how useful help is if you actually are in your OverDrive account and you click on help um, and you go to categories right here one of the categories is the OverDrive app and so you will get a lot of information um, and it will drill you down based on your operating system so I've got an Apple device and it will provide information um, on borrowing titles, getting started with the OverDrive app, et cetera. Um, it will tell uh, you where you can get the OverDrive app, either from the Apple App Store, or it points you to an OverDrive app page that uh, provides information on and links to um, all the different versions of their software that they provide. So it takes you to the App Store, it lets you download OverDrive for Mac, Google Play Store, um, etc. So you've got all the links you really need to point you where you need to go within Help. So um, obviously on the Kindle Fire, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, um, on the iPad, um, you can go to the App Store and search for OverDrive, find the app, download it, and install it. Um, the first time you, when you first download and install the app and go to open it, you are going to be prompted to sign into the app. And this is, I think, a little bit hard to um, explain, but um, you're going to be given three options for signing into the app. You can sign in with a library card number, which your patrons already have, a Facebook account, or an OverDrive account. 
Um, the overdrive account is not necessarily something that patrons will have already. It's something that they create themselves and there will be a link right by um, where they're given the option of signing in with an overdrive app saying if you don't have an overdrive app then sign up for one here and it'll walk through the, them through the process. It requires an email address and then the patron chooses their own password. So any of these three methods of signing into the app will work. Um, my own preference is to use the OverDrive account even if that means the patron has to create one more account. So again, it's probably not going to be the end of the world if they sign in with their library card number or their Facebook account, but there are, um, in some cases, for some people, there will be advantages to using that OverDrive app. So that is, um, that's kind of my recommendation if you catch them ahead of time. The most important thing to be aware of though is that if a patron wants to access their OverDrive uh, ebooks on more than one device at a time during the checkout period. For instance, in my case, I've got an Apple iPhone and I've got a Kindle Fire tablet. I want to be able to check out an ebook and access it on either of those devices. I've downloaded the OverDrive app to both those devices. So I need to make sure that when I log in, when I initially sign into the app, I sign in using the same method. So I need to sign into both OverDrive apps using my OverDrive account. If I sign in on one using my OverDrive account and the other using my library card number, um, I download my ebook to one, I try to download it to the other and it says, eh, you can't, um, this is, uh, basically this app is uh, tied to a different user than the app that you already downloaded this to. So that's the most important thing to remember when someone's downloading and setting up the app. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open it. First uh, thing you have to do is um, usually uh, select uh, find a library. Um, I have already uh, searched for and added the Nebraska Overdrive Library's website. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this and show you how uh, you could have added it. So I'm going to go ahead and say add library. There we go, add library. I can search or browse. I'm gonna go ahead and type in the library that my a card is associated with, Shadron. Click on Shadron. It says Shadron uses the Nebraska Overdrive libraries. Uh, collection, and it takes me to that website. You'll also notice that it's automatically added that library to my list of libraries. So I can, it looks like I'm already logged in, so I can go to my loans page because I want to download some of the items I've checked out to um, the OverDrive app on my device. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and download an EPUB ebook and an MP3 audiobook. So I want to download First to Die. I'm going to download the EPUB ebook. And you'll notice that uh, my return options already disappeared. And I'm going to download the MP3 audiobook. Um, ebooks download pretty quickly. They're a single file. Audiobooks do take longer because they're multiple files. So this looks like it's probably eight parts. Um, I can go back to my app bookshelf. So I'm clicking on the menu up here. I'm going to my bookshelf. Remember the bookshelf was empty when we started. And I have my ebook here so I can open it.
and I can tap through to read it. Um, again, if I click in the center of the book, I get menu options that let me change font size, brightness. Uh, I can go to settings and uh, make some changes in layout. I've got chapter options and uh, bookmarks up at the top. If I want to go back to my bookshelf, I can do that using the menu in the upper left hand corner. Uh, and let's see if enough of the audio is downloaded. Uh, it looks like it's still trying to download. But you can see it comes up. Um, you'd hit play. Um, it's going to take a while, it looks like. But anyway, so now I can listen to it on my tablet. Um, if you want to check out, if you want to return a title, you can no longer return it from the loans page in your Nebraska Overdrive Library's account. You have to return it from the Overdrive app. The way to do that is if you press and hold on the title on the bookshelf, you're going to get a return to library option and it will ask you if you want to return it to the library early and delete it from the device. And so if you do, you can click return to continue. I'm going to just cancel it right now because I don't want to return it. And the same will be true with the audiobook. Let's just see if the audiobook will play now. I don't think you can probably hear it, but I can hear it playing. Um, one more thing I'll point out. You can see here there's a list of files. This does let you keep track of how the files are downloaded. So sometimes if a patron's having trouble getting an entire audiobook to download, you can come here, look to see which of the parts have downloaded, where they are in, in the progress. Uh, and also there's a little green arrow here. Sometimes this gets turned off. That basically turns off automatic download, and so if that's turned off, your title's not going to download. And so you can always check that to make sure that's turned on if a patron's having trouble downloading. Also, what often happens is patrons can't remember how they, um, you know, when they first downloaded and set up the OverDrive app, they can't remember how they signed in. They don't remember if they used an OverDrive account, a uh, library card number, or uh, a Facebook account. Um, they can usually look that up here um, under Settings. And under Overdrive, Adobe ID, it says this device is authorized with the OverDrive account, Susan Nisley at Nebraska.gov. So that, again, uh, will tell you how the site was authorized. Okay, do you guys have um, questions then about the OverDrive app? Um, I just want to point out there is, um, you may have noticed that OverDrive uh, on their website is now pushing a new app called the Libby app. And I do have that downloaded here. It is not yet available for as many uh, devices or operating systems as the old OverDrive app is. I believe it is available for um, iOS devices, Android devices, and devices running Windows 10 and higher. So if you've got a Windows 8 device, Libby won't work on it. If you've got a Chromebook, uh, Libby won't work on it. But I think um, they're trying to uh, sort of build it for the future. So uh, I don't think the OverDrive app is going to go away anytime soon. But if you want to download the Libby app and start playing with it, um, you may want to give it a shot. It lets you download audiobooks and ebooks. The nice thing about this app is if you have uh, several members of your family who share an iPad, and so you each have your own library card and you want to be able to. Uh, use the device uh, among yourselves. There is an option here. Um, up here in the right hand corner you've got the menu. Uh, you can uh, 
add library cards. So I have one library card that I have added to this account. And so say I have another family member. These are, you'll recognize, these are the titles that we already checked out using um, my library card on the OverDrive site. Uh, and it's automatically downloaded loaded them to this device. But say um, I have a child and they have another card, I can add that card. So it's going to make me walk through this process again. So you'll notice some additional uh, ebooks just showed up on uh, my, this is what's called the shelf here. So that Libby app shelf um, is combining uh, the ebooks checked out under both of the cards that I have added to this. Um, so you'll see I have both cards here. And I can switch which card I want to use when I'm checking out titles. But then within the app itself, it integrates the content. So I can switch back and forth between any of the books that um, were checked out with any of the cards associated with this app. So um, that's the Libby app. Um, we are almost out of time, but I do want to uh, talk a little bit about the MP3 player option and the um, uh, standalone e-reader option. So um, I don't know how many of you have had someone come in with a device like this and say they want to get um, their OverDrive audiobooks on this device. Um, if you haven't used one of these before, you might look at it and think, okay, well, there's no way I can put the app on that. How am I going to get um, audiobooks on this device? So um, that is where, um, again, this is where help can come in handy. Um, if you are stumped by um, how to help a patron with a particular device. Um, that's why I'd go to help, devices, mp3 player. It will give you um, some examples of mp3 players. It will tell you what software you need, overdrive for Windows or Mac. It'll tell you the format that you can put on that device. And it'll have getting started with mp3 players. So again, it says install OverDrive desktop app for Windows or Mac. Um, and it will again uh, let you drill down and get more detailed information. So it'll say steps to install, install OverDrive for Windows desktop. Again, it takes you to this page. You scroll down to the bottom and you've got download for Windows desktop. So you can, if you click on that, it actually starts uh, downloading the software. Um, you just save the file and, and install or run it. So I already have that software installed, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, say download MP3 audiobook. And I have to do this on a computer. Obviously, I can't do it on the little MP3 player itself. So it says, I've chosen to open this book uh, with OverDrive for Windows. So I'm going to say OK. And let's see. My, it's opening on the wrong screen here. Shoot.
There we go. Okay. So it has opened on, it has automatically downloaded and opened this software. So I can open it and play it on the device itself, or I can transfer it to the MP3 player or burn it to a CD. So I'm going to click on transfer. And I get a little pop-up window and it says it's going to walk me through the process of transferring it. It says, please connect your device and select next to continue. So bringing up my um, camera again, I've got the little USB cable. I plug it in to my computer, USB. Uh, it's turning on. So let's go back here. I'm going to say next. And it's recognizing my Sansa Clip player here. And I, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, transfer one part so we can do that quickly. So part one, I'm going to say next. It transfers it. It says I can just connect my portable player. And hopefully your patron knows a little bit about how to use their device, but I, there we go. There's uh, Catherine Stockett is the author, and I go down and the help is available. I just did one part, but I can play it and listen to it then on my little um, MP3 player. Questions about that? Okay, then um, we've just got one more uh, demo to do, and that is um, on trying to get an ebook onto a standalone device uh, like uh, what we have here at the Commission is a Nook Simple Touch. And again, um, these used to be pretty popular. Um, they're not as uh, common now as they used to be because lots of people have tablets and smartphones. Um, but uh, this uh, device, it's got internet access, but the internet access only lets you buy content from um, the Barnes and Noble store, or that's the way it's worked in the past. So if you want to get an ebook on here from someplace else, you have to download it to your computer with Adobe Digital Edition software and then transfer it. Um, so, Ah, uh, sorry about that. We are going to, let's try to download, uh, Second Chance. So I'm going to download EPUB, and um, I've already downloaded the Adobe Digital Edition software under my computer, so what's going to happen is it's going to say, do you want to open this with Adobe Digital Editions? Okay, um, it's opening. Whoops. It downloaded it to Adobe Digital Editions and uh, it opened the book. So I want to go back to the library view. And one thing I want to show you, um, the first, when you download Adobe Digital Editions, you're going to be prompted to authorize it. Um, traditionally, you had to always authorize Adobe Digital Editions with an Adobe ID, but somewhere along the way, they did uh, start using other authentication options. And one of the options for authorizing Adobe Digital Editions is an OverDrive account. That's one of the reasons why I said there are certain advantages to using that OverDrive account because you can also um, authorize Adobe Digital Editions with an OverDrive account. So if I go in here and open up Health, Help, 
and I want to see how this is authorized. In the past, it says it's authorized using an OverDrive account, susan.nisley at nebraska.gov, so it's authorized the same way as that OverDrive app. So I could theoretically download a book and put it on my Nook Simple Touch and also have it on my iPad using the OverDrive app, because both have been authorized with the same OverDrive account. So I've got the book downloaded. What I want to do now is connect my uh, Nook Simple Touch uh, to my uh, computer with the, again, the USB cable. So let me just get this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on here. Uh, so I just need to connect it here. There we go, sorry about that. And I should have pointed this out ahead of time, but um, I don't know if you noticed when I connected this, over here in the Adobe Digital Edition software, now you can see device Nook. Suddenly that showed up once I connected the Nook with the USB. So now what I can do is I can I can either drag and drop my book to the Nook or I can right click on the book I want to transfer and it says copy to computer device Nook. So it says it copied it. So let me bring up my camera again and I have to unconnect the USB to see if this worked. And let's go back to the device, go to library, and you'll see second chance is there, so it is now transferred to the standalone device. Um, if I want to return this item, remember I will no longer be able to return it from my Nebraska Overdrive Library's account on the web. I can right click on this uh, item and return borrowed item, return, it disappears. If I go back up here and refresh, you can see that it's no longer checked out to me. So. Um, that is that. Um, that's the end of the content that I had planned for you guys. Um, do you guys have questions for me before we wrap things up? Well, if not, um, thank you guys for coming. Um, I apologize for the fact that you didn't get the login information um, until five minutes before. Uh, the session started today and I'll try to figure out what went wrong. Um, if you have follow-up questions, feel free to give me a call. Um, anytime you have questions, feel free to give me a call. Um, and I will actually um, later today put up a copy of this recording, so if for some reason you want to go back and review any section or if you've got other staff members that want to watch it, it will be available later for review. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and again, Feel free to give me a call with follow-up questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.